Hello, and welcome back to yet another video. This is the first episode in a Naruto Uzumaki story in which a few little changes might have a significant impact. Knowledge provided early in Naruto's career converted him from a hopeless loser to a powerful and skilled shinobi. Historical differences that have long ago passed have resulted in a totally different consequence than we imagined. After you've finished watching, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. To begin, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Let's get the party started, it was early morning in Konoha, the village hidden in the leaves. The sun was just starting to rise, painting the sky in oranges and yellows. People began to slowly wake up and start their day, merchants getting their shops ready, parents making breakfast for their children, and children getting ready to go to school. Like always it was a normal day. As the sun shone into his apartment, one Uzumaki Naruto groaned, turning over so the light wouldn't hit his eyes and he could remain asleep and dream of Sakura feeding him ramen as he was named Hokage. Unfortunately it was not to be as the alarm clock Naruto had set began blaring loudly. Beep. 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 Gah, Naruto shouted as he fell out of bed. Blinking he looked around as his vision began to clear. He stood up and shut off his alarm, yawning loudly as he stretched. He looked back at the alarm clock. It was fairly old and worn from use, Naruto had found it in a trash can and fixed it up. However he had never actually used it before. For a moment Naruto tried to remember why he had set the alarm clock in the first place. He scratched his belly for a moment in thought before his eyes caught sight of his calendar, more specifically the date with the large red circle. That's right, it's the final exam before I become a ninja, Naruto shouted in a frantic voice as his eyes widened. He rushed into the bathroom turning on the water of his shower as he took off his pajamas and stepped into the shower. The water was cold, freezing cold in fact, but Naruto had long since learned to ignore it. The owner of the complex was a rather cranky old lady who, like most of the villagers, meaning around 98% of the population, hated his guts. She had long ago turned off all the hot water that went to his apartment, forcing him to take cold showers. Finished washing Naruto turned off the water, grabbed a towel and dried himself off. Moving back into his room, Naruto moved over to the closet. Opening it up revealed his entire collection of clothes, all of them were a bright orange tracksuit that he had managed to get, he had actually not even bought these, they had been too expensive since he had been charged triple the price for what most people would pay for normal clothing. Naruto had actually been forced to wait until the store owner had finally gotten rid of them, which was what the man had been going to do anyway when Naruto wanted to buy them, and then snatch them from the trash can. He grabbed one of them and went over to the dresser, opening a drawer and grabbing some underwear. He soon put his clothes on and made his way to the kitchen. Opening his cupboard the blonde grabbed one of his cups of ramen, opening it up and pouring some water in it. He moved over to his microwave and opened it up, placing the ramen in it and setting the timer for 3 minutes. Like all the appliance he had, the microwave was beaten and battered, having been found and fixed up by Naruto after someone, had thrown it out. As soon as the beep sounded Naruto opened the microwave grabbed the ramen and a pair of chopsticks and made his way out of the apartment. Not bothering to lock the door on his way out, after all, no one ever bothered coming here anyway. Naruto opened the door to the room where he had spent the last 6 years in training to be a ninja. He looked around for a seat and was disgruntled when the only open one he could find was the one next to Uchiha Sasuke, Bruder Extraordinaire and his ultimate rival. Naruto had never understood the brooding emo king. Everyone loved Sasuke, the girls in his class, the teachers in his class, the civilians and other shinobi in the village, everyone. The boy was handed everything on a silver platter, Konoha's golden boy. But for some reason Sasuke remained a cold and aloof bastard. It hurt Naruto, who would do anything for the kind of love and attention the raven-haired kid had. Not being able to find anywhere else to sit Naruto moved over to sit next to the last Uchiha. Team, Naruto said by way of greeting. HN. Naruto merely rolled his eyes at the response he received, having grown used to that kind of response. Hell, that was the only response Sasuke gave anyone, even the teachers had trouble getting more out of him. The only one quieter than Sasuke was Aburame Shino, a member of the famed Aburame clan, and Naruto was convinced that kid was mute. I hope you're ready to bask in my awesomeness as I kick ass today team, Naruto said, seeing if he could get some kind of reaction out of the boy. HN. Naruto grit his teeth in frustration. He was just about to start yelling when Haruno Sakura walked through the door. Sakura was a girl with bubblegum pink hair, and wore a red Chinese style dress with a white circle in the middle, black mid-thigh length skin tight shorts and blue shinobi sandals. Like the other girls in his class, she was a complete Sasuke fangirl. 
however to Naruto she was one of the most beautiful people he had ever met and was the girl he had been crushing on for nearly his entire time at the academy with no success. Not that something as insignificant as six years of no success would stop him. Hey Sakura-chan, Naruto shouted enthusiastically as he waved at the girl. Hey, hey about after school you and I shut up Naruto Baka, Sakura shouted as she smashed a fist into Naruto's face, sending the boy sprawling back onto his seat. I don't want to hear your annoying voice today. And move so I can sit next to Sasuke-kun. With nothing left to say on her part Sakura grabbed Naruto by the jacket and bodily threw him off the seat. So Sasuke-kun, I was thinking maybe after school we could go on a date together? Sakura asked in a hopeful voice as she twirled her hair in her fingers and gave Sasuke a shy look. Sasuke didn't even spare her a look as he continued to stare out of the window. HN. Naruto winced a bit as he stood up, sighing he took the seat on Sasuke's left. He had grown used to this over the years. He had lost count of the number of times that Sakura had rejected him for a date, as well as the number of times she had hit him for asking. Sometimes after her particularly more harsh rejections, he would often wonder why he even bothered. Of course those bouts of depression never seemed to last more than three seconds or so. After a while Iruka, the Chunin Academy instructor for the academy, came in with Mizuki, his assistant, following close behind him. Alright class, it's time for the test to see who among you are ready to receive their headband and become ninja of Konoha, Iruka said. Naruto grinned. I can do this. He thought with confidence. Naruto had been up late last night training. He was positive that he could complete any test set before him. Now when I call your name I want you to come into the next room and perform the Bunshine no Jutsu, transform, Iruka continued, looking down at his roster as he began to call the names of the Jinan hopefuls. With those words Naruto began to feel despair. Out of all the things he could have asked us to do, why that one? The Bunshine had always been Naruto's worst Jutsu. For some reason, no matter how hard he worked at it, he just could not get it down. Naruto watched as the other kids came out their headbands proudly displayed on their heads. It was nearly enough to make him lose confidence. However the blonde quickly shored up his determination. He was not going to fail again. He was Uzumaki Naruto damn it. Uzumaki Naruto. Iruka called out. Naruto grinned, masking his nervousness behind a confident smile as he walked into the other room. Iruka took a seat behind his desk next to Mizuki. Alright Naruto, show us what you can do, Iruka said. He was not quite sure what to think about the blonde boy. He had only recently, yesterday, started to try and understand Naruto, after having had a talk with the Hokage after Naruto had done a prank of painting the Hokage monument. The kid in some ways reminded Iruka of himself when he had been an academy student, the pranks, the constantly being loud in order to get attention. In the end he just decided to silently wish the boy luck. Naruto went through the hand seals required for the jutsu as he began to channel his chakra. Bunshine no Jutus, he shouted. A large puff of smoke was created and when it cleared everyone's attention was on the clone next to Naruto. The completely dead looking clone that was laying on the ground and twitching spastically. Several tick marks appeared on Erika's head as he looked at the clone. You fail. Naruto's eyes widened. He couldn't understand it. He failed? But he had tried so hard, and he really wanted to pass this time. Come on Iruka, I think we can make an exception this time. Maizuk said, surprising Iruka and Naruto. While he did not manage to create a clone he did try really hard, Iruka sighed, I can't do that. Everyone else in the class was able to create at least three clones. And Naruto only managed to create one, and look at it, it's pathetic. The tuning instructor looked at Naruto, I'm sorry Naruto, but I can't pass you. Naruto felt his world shatter with those words, he dejectedly walked out of the room and took his seat. As the class ended and the kids ran up to their parents, showing off their new headbands. Listening with joy as their parents heaped praises on them. One person however, was not partaking in the joyous atmosphere. Naruto sat over on a small swing set, staring at all of the students and their parents with a look of longing. Having never known his parents the blonde had often wondered about them. The people at the orphanage had told him they had left, not wanting to be with a monster like him. The old man had told him that his parents had died during the QB attack and no one knew who they were. Seeing all these kids with their parents hurt, he would never show it and would deny it if anyone mentioned it, but he could not deny to himself how much it hurt. I'm so glad that boy didn't end up graduating. Naruto turned his head slightly as he heard the voice. He had always been blessed with enhanced senses, his hearing, vision and smell were far more formidable than most people. Sometimes that was more of a curse than a blessing. Yeah I know. 
Could you imagine what would happen if he became a ninja? I mean he's, bitch. you know we're not allowed to talk about that. Naruto frowned as he turned his attention away from the discussion taking place. He had heard many talks of a similar nature with other people whenever they spoke of him and thought he couldn't hear. They would always stop however, as if they had been about to say something taboo. He wished he knew what they were going to say. Maybe then he would understand why he was so hated. Hey Naruto. Naruto turned around to see Mizuki looking at him, come with me, I wanted to talk to you. You know, Iruka didn't fail you to mean. Mizuki said as he and Naruto sat on the roof of the academy. He's just worried that you're not going to be ready to face the responsibilities of being a ninja. I know, Naruto sighed dejectedly. But I really wanted to pass this time. An evil of glint came to Mizuki's eyes but Naruto did not see it. Then I guess I have to tell you. Naruto grinned as he entered the Hokage's office, having sneaked past all of the guards downstairs. It had been notoriously easy for him to do so. In fact a part of Naruto was surprised by how easy it was, but he just chalked it up to his amazing skills. Now let's see, where is that scroll? Naruto muttered as he looked around. Naruto had been in this office many times in the past, often coming in after a prank or sometimes just to visit the old Hokage. The office was fairly standard, it had a wooden oak desk in front of him that had a window overlooking Konoha behind it. On the left was a couch and behind that were the pictures of the four Hokages. On the other side was a bookshelf filled with books and scrolls. Walking over to the shelf Naruto looked at the scrolls, when he didn't see what he wanted he frowned. He was about to turn around when his eyes caught sight of the stand right next to the shelf. Because Naruto had only given the room a cursory glance every time he was in here he had never noticed it. The stand was really just that, a stand made of wood that had a large scroll on it. This has got to be it, Naruto said as he grabbed the scroll. He tied the ends with some ninja wire before strapping it to his back. He was just about to leave when the door opened up and Sarutobi walked in. Naruto, the old Hokage blinked as he looked at the blonde, what are you doing here? Ah. Uh, I well. He he you see. Naruto racked his brain to find a way out of this. In his desperation he realized there was only one chance. Naruto quickly made a hand sign and called out the only original jutsu he had. Oyoroku no jutsu, sexy jutsu. Naruto snickered to himself as he entered the forest. Ha. I showed Oji-san who's boss. With how easy it was for me to knock the old man out, he might as well just make me Hokage. Taking the scroll off his back Naruto sat down and unrolled it. He looked at the first jutsu and groaned, Cage Bunshine. Not another Bunshine jutsu. The blonde sighed, oh well might as well get to work. Deciding that it might actually be a good idea to read up on the jutsu in order to help him, Naruto looked over the description of the jutsu first. Cage Bunshine no jutsu a B-rank kinjutsu, for Biden jutsu, that can only be used by ninja with higher than normal chakra reserves. This jutsu takes the user's chakra and divides it equally in order to create solid copies of the original. The more chakra the user has, the more clones they can create. Be warned this jutsu also gives memory feedback every time a clone is dispelled and has been known to kill people who overused it due to this particular trait. Naruto gulped a bit at the knowledge that this had killed someone, though a part of him wondered what it meant by memory feedback. He shook his head, it doesn't matter if this killed someone. I'm Uzumaki Naruto and I'm going to master this. Determination renewed Naruto stood up and began getting to work. With a jutsu this powerful he would be Hokage in no time. Less than an hour later Naruto found himself staring at 10 more copies of himself, the jutsu had been surprisingly easy. Blinking a few times he reached out with a finger and poked one of them. Stop, that tickles, his clone said as he swatted the hand away. Naruto blinked again before a large grin spread across his face. Yada. I did it, Naruto shouted as he pumped a fist in the air. Yada. All of his clones shouted, emulating his actions. Naruto dispelled the clones since he didn't need them. However, when he did Naruto found himself getting the images of himself and his clones from, then other perspectives. What the hell? Was that what the scroll was talking about when it said memory whatever? Naruto asked himself. He shrugged, in the end all that mattered to him was that he had mastered the jutsu. He was just about to go over some more jutsu from the scroll when a familiar voice yelled at him. There you are. Naruto looked up and saw Iruka stomping up to him. The blonde grinned as he jumped up and pointed a finger at him, ha. Found you Iruka sensei. Baka, Iruka shouted as he stopped in front of his blonde student. I found you. He he I guess you did sensei, Naruto replied as he rubbed the back of his neck. You were pretty fast. I only had time to learn one jutsu. Iruka started as he looked around at the ruined clearing. He has been training hard, I can tell. 
Naruto jumped on the balls of his feet as he spoke to his sensei in an excited manner. Hey but listen Iruka, now that you're here I can show you this totally awesome jutsu and you can let me graduate. That's how it all works out right? Iruka who was just about to go back to scolding Naruto blinked. What? Graduate? Naruto nodded, yeah that's how it works right? I learn a jutsu from the scroll and you let me graduate. Iruka looked at Naruto cautiously, while he did certainly look like he had been training. Iruka had no idea where Naruto had gotten this idea for graduating this way. Naruto who told you, you can graduate this way? Iruka asked. Naruto tilted his head to the side. Mizuki sensei did. He told me where to find this scroll and about this place. Iruka's eyes widened as he realized what was going on. He was just about to say something when he heard a whizzing sound and shoved Naruto away. Get down. Several kunai came out of the trees and impaled Iruka in the leg and arms. The Chunin instructor looked up and scowled, I see so that's how it is. Wow you got here pretty fast. Naruto who had been staring at Iruka in shock, looked up to see Mizuki with a large grin on his face. Mizuki sensei, what's going on here? Why are you attacking Iruka sensei? Naruto mumbled. Hearing his voice, the two Chunin turned their attention to Naruto. Give me the scroll Naruto, Mizuki commanded, holding out his hand. No Naruto don't give it to him, Iruka shouted. W what's going on? Naruto asked, unsure what he should do. Mizuki used you to get the scroll, Iruka said, that scroll contains Konoha's secret and forbidden jutsu. He lied to you so you would do his bidding. Oh I'll tell you who's lying Naruto, Mizuki said with a smirk. Iruka looked over at Mizuki and saw the smirk on his face, it was then he realized what the white haired trader was going to say and his eyes widened. No Mizuki don't say it, you know it's forbidden. Naruto looked back and forth between his two senseis in confusion. What do you mean? Who's lying? They've been lying to you your whole life, ever since the degree of 12 years ago. Mizuki looked at Naruto with an insane grin. 12 years ago? Naruto shook his head, I don't understand. No. Mizuki don't. Haven't you ever wondered why were you hated? Misuki questioned, making the blonde's eyes widen. Why you were ignored? Why people treated you like you were worthless? like less than dirt. Mizuki stop it now, Iruka shouted to no avail. I'll tell you why Naruto, Mizuki sneered, you see what they don't want you to know, was that the Ondame did not actually kill the QB. Instead he sealed it away inside of a newborn baby. Naruto began to tremble, while he never paid attention and didn't like to study he had never been dumb. Stupid? Maybe a little. But living on his own since he was five had forced him to develop a little faster than most. No he was not the brightest person, but he did have a decent amount of common sense and a keen ability to read others, something that had helped him immensely in the past when he had run into several drunken villagers. He knew that Mizuki was telling him this for a reason, that the child who the QB was sealed into and he were in some way tied. Mizuki confirmed his theory a few seconds later, you are the child he sealed the QB into. You are the nine-tailed fox. Naruto slumped to his knees. Everything made sense to him now. The glares, the hatred, the people muttering behind his back telling their children to stay away from him. A part of him was actually angry that he had not realized this. His birthday was the day of the QB's defeat, people hated him with a passion, the one time he went out during the QB festival because he wanted to celebrate his birthday he had been beaten by a group of drunken villagers. All of it made sense. So I'm a demon then. Naruto was so caught up in his turmoil that he did not even see the giant Fuimashuri Khan heading his way. A second later Naruto found himself staring into Erika's deer-streaked face, he looked over to see a giant shuriken sticking out of his sensei's back. Why? Naruto asked, his voice cracking with emotion. Because we're the same, Iruka said with guilt lacing his words. I was just like you, back when I was in the academy I was so lonely, so I played the fool. I know what it's like to feel that kind of pain, it hurts doesn't it? I'm so sorry Naruto, I should have done more to help you. Ha 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 ha, Mizuki laughed behind them, that's a good one Iruga. But we both know you hate him more than anyone. After all, it was the demon who took your parents away. Naruto's eyes widened when he heard that. Naruto did the only thing he could do given what he was being told, he grabbed the scroll and ran. Naruto. Iruka's voice sounded after him. Naruto continued jumping through the trees as fast as he could to get away from the two Chunin. Naruto. Turning around the blonde saw Iruka coming towards him. Naruto. Mizuki was lying. He was just saying that stuff to confuse you. The Chunin Academy teacher held out his hand. Give me the scroll so we can keep Mizuki from getting it. However, 
Naruto merely spun around and launched himself back at Hiruka, smashing his head into the Chunin's gut. The two tumbled down the trees and onto the ground. How? Hiruka questioned as he held onto his stomach, how did you know, there was a puff of smoke? That I wasn't Hiruka? Asked the Mizuki. Naruto smirked, because. There was a puff of smoke, when it cleared it revealed Hiruka. I'm Hiruka. Mizuki scowled, why are you protecting that demon anyways? You know what he'll do now that he has his hands on the scroll? Naruto is just like me. He'll use the power that's inside the scroll to destroy Konoha. That's what demons are like. You're right, said Iruka, surprising Mizuki. That is what a demon would do. Naruto who had taken to hiding behind a tree as he listened in, froze at those words. I see. He thought sadly. So Iruka only sees me as a demon too. But that's not what Naruto would do, Iruka's words caused Naruto and Mizuki to snap their attention back to him. Naruto is not the demon. He's my student and a proud ninja of Konoha. Sure he may not always get things right and he's a little. Well he's really clumsy and doesn't act all that smart. But he's nothing like you. Naruto is a one in a million kind of person and I believe in him. Naruto went from depressed to elated, Iruka believed in him. For as long as he could remember only the old man and a nice father slash daughter couple at Ichiraku Ramen believed in him. Having another person who believed he could succeed was an elating feeling. You know Iruka I was going to save you for later, but I've changed my mind, Mizuki sneered as he began spinning his shuriken on his arm as he got ready to launch it. Die. Just as Mizuki got ready to throw his Fuima shuriken at the Iruka a blonde and orange streak crashed into him, launching a foot into his face. The Chunin trader scowled as he landed several feet back, glaring at the person who had hit him. If you lay one hand on my sensei, I'll kill you, Naruto declared, giving his opponent a defiant glare. Ha! I'd like to see you try demon, Mizuki shouted with an insane grin. Naruto put his hands in a ram seal and began amassing his chakra for another jutsu that he had seen in the scroll. Taju Ukage Bunshine no jutsu. Both Iruka and Mizuki gaped as hundreds if not thousands of Naruto's appeared within the forest. They were everywhere, a literal sea of orange that almost blocked out all of the green of the forest. What's wrong Mizuki team? I thought you were going to kick my ass. One of the clones shouted. Another cracked his knuckles, well if you're not coming to us, I guess we'll just go to you. The clones all jumped up and headed towards the terrified traitor. Naruto grinned as he looked down at the mass of black and blue flesh that had at one point been Mizuki. Hee hee, maybe I went a little too hard on him, the blonde said with a sheepish grin. Unbelievable. Iruka thought in awe. To be able to have learned such a powerful jutsu in less than an hour. And the number of clones. He said that he wanted to be surpassed the Hokages and I'm beginning to believe he just might do it. Naruto, Iruka said, getting the blonde's attention. Come here, I have something I want to give you. Naruto blinked before walking over to him, what's up sensei? Close your eyes for a moment, Iruka said. Naruto did so and as he did felt a weight being removed from his head before a new one took its place. Okay, you can open them now. Naruto did so and his hand went to his head, feeling the cold metal and notched grooves of a Konoha headband. Iruka had his goggles in his hand. Congratulations. You graduate, Iruka said with pride. And to celebrate, we're going out for ramen tonight. Naruto smiled and was hard pressed not to cry. He decided to hide his tears by jumping on Iruka in a hug. Iruka sensei. Oh wow wow, Naruto that hurts. Iruka said, though he was pleased to see the boy so excited. Thank you Iruka-kun, you may leave for now, Sarutobi said as Iruka escorted Naruto to his office. It was late and Iruka and Naruto had just gone out for some ramen after a clone had given Sarutobi the forbidden scroll. However he had wanted to talk to Naruto and make sure he was alright. Um. Sure Hokage-sama, Iruka said, I'll see you in a week Naruto. As Iruka closed the door behind him, Sarutobi turned to look at Naruto. Naruto. Sarutobi started, only to stop as Naruto launched himself at him, grabbing onto the old Hokage as he cried. Sarutobi was actually surprised, in all his years of knowing the blonde he had only ever seen him cry once. The one time he had gone out to the QB festival and gotten beaten by a group of drunk villagers. I guess what he learned today was too much for him to take, Sarutobi thought as he wrapped Naruto in a hug. Sorry. GG, Naruto said with a small hiccup. For what? Sarutobi asked amused. The scroll has back, you helped me root out a traitor and just became a Jinan. I got your robes wet, Naruto pointed at the small wet spot from his crying. The sun daimyo looked down to see that his robes were indeed wet from Naruto's tears. Sarutobi held in a snort of amusement, 
of all the things Naruto could be sorry for, it was for getting his robes wet. Gigi, Naruto said in an abnormally quiet voice. Is it true? What Mizuki s Mizuki said. Sarutobi sighed, he had known this was coming at some point and had hoped to have some time to prepare for it. It is. So I am a demon, Naruto said, looking down at the ground, tears forming in his eyes. Sarutobi grabbed Naruto by the shoulders, making the blonde look up at him. Naruto, I want you to listen carefully. You are not a demon. When the Ondame sealed the Kyubi into you, he had made it his dying wish for you to be seen as a hero. A hero? Naruto questioned, getting a nod from Sarutobi. Why, because Naruto, it is only thanks to you that the Kyubi is safely locked away. You are the entire reason that Konoha is still standing today, Sarutobi said. Really? Naruto asked, his voice a little hopeful. Yes, Sarutobi said, you are the hero of Konoha. Then, how come everyone hates me? The blonde asked. Sarutobi sighed, they don't hate you Naruto. They just don't understand, sealing, or fuinjutsu as it's called, is one of the most obscure ninja arts there is, and the hardest to master. Very few people understand this, and so when something like a demon gets sealed into somebody, they are unsure whether the seal can really hold something like that, a being of such power in. You have to understand that when the Kyubi attacked, many good ninja died that day, and because of that they are unwilling to accept you, fearing that you are really just the Kyubi in human form. Naruto frowned, that made sense, in some sick and twisted way. But now that he knew why he was hated, he had to wonder what he should do. Would people be able to accept him? Could he get people to see past the Kyubi and look at him as Naruto? At the moment it didn't seem all that likely. After all, the people of Konoha had 12 years to get over their loss and see Naruto for himself. Then again he had not really helped in that regard. He had been so desperate for attention that he had turned to pranks, since even bad attention was better than no attention. But maybe if I show them that how good a ninja I am, and that I'm willing to protect the village, maybe I can change their minds. Naruto thought to himself. He looked up at Sarutobi with determination, I'll show them that I'm not the Kyubi, that I'm Uzumaki Naruto. Future Hokage of Konoha. I won't let this get to me, ever. Dadabayo. Sarutobi smiled at seeing the boy's wall of fire returning. That's good Naruto-kun. I have no doubt you will eventually get there. However, it will require a lot more hard work than what you are used to. You won't be able to do your pranks anymore and will have to actually take the time to learn about being a shinobi. After all, a Hokage is not just the most powerful ninja in the village, he is the smartest and most cunning as well. So then you're pretty smart, ha oji san Naruto said. Sarutobi chuckled a bit. Naruto-kun do you know why I earned my nickname of professor? Naruto scratched the back of his head. Ah. Uh, because you're smart? Well essentially yes. Sarutobi admitted. However, it is much more than that. I earned the title of professor because of my ability to read people and react to any given situation both on and off the battlefield. In the many years that I have lived, I have amassed much knowledge from reading books. Things that taught me about shinobi basics, to the more advanced ninja abilities and theories, as well as knowledge on civilian practices like politics, which has become essential for every Hokage to know now. He took a minute to curse the Nidime's decision to create the council, the whole reason a Hokage needed to know politics. He had been told by a sensei, Senju Tabarima before the second shinobi war started that the he was 100% positive he had been drunk when he came up with the idea. It looked good on paper, having a group of people dedicated to helping the Hokage deal with the everyday affairs of Konoha's civilians. However the reality was far different. Sarutobi had spent more time fighting with the council than anything, and many of the people in it, especially on the civilian side were extraordinarily greedy, always wanting more money and to line their pockets with more coin. The old Hokage shook his head and banished the thought. Anyway the point I'm trying to make is that to be a good shinobi requires you to be not just strong, but also smart. I guess that makes sense. Naruto tilted his head for a moment before remembering something. Oh yeah. Speaking of being strong you know that awesome jutsu I learned? The cage bunshine. Yes I know it, Sarutobi said, wondering where the blonde was going with this. Yeah well I was reading the description of it, and I was hoping you could help me figure out something I read in it. The scroll said something about memory feedback, and that it was really dangerous for some reason. But. I don't even know what that is. Naruto scratched the back of his head sheepishly. Sarutobi looked at Naruto as he used his cunning mind, the mind that had given him his title of professor to come up with a plan that should help the blonde get stronger without really helping him formed in his mind. 
Memory feedback is the memories of the clone's life returning to the user, Sarutobi answered. Whenever a clone is dispelled, whether on purpose, by accident or running out of chakra, all of its memories are given to the person who created them. Like when I created those ten in the forest and saw ten different sides of myself and my clones, Naruto mumbled to himself though Sarutobi still heard it. Yes, the cage bunshine no jutsu is a powerful technique that way, Sarutobi said. Naruto looked up and tilted his head in curiosity, how so? Sarutobi tapped his chin, well originally the clones were created because they were the perfect spying tools. You could have one of your clones infiltrate a base without any danger to the original and when they dispelled, they would give a complete layout of the base. So it's used to memorize things? Asked Naruto, scratching the back of his head. Sarutobi nodded, yes. However, the cage bunshine can be used for more than just memorization Naruto-kun. In fact that jutsu is an excellent method to learn new things with. You can learn just about anything from your clones, from chakra control and jutsu, to the books you read, writing and even taijutsu since muscle memory is a mental faculty. That sounds almost like it can be used for training, Naruto exclaimed, excited by the prospect of what he could get his clones to do. The old Hokage nodded, it can indeed be used for training. Though I suspect, that only you will be able to use this jutsu to its full potential. Why is that? Asked Naruto, excited at the prospect that there was something only he could do. Because you're the only one who has enough chakra to summon enough clones to really make the training worth it. Most ninja, even Jonin, can only make 5 maybe 10 clones if they're lucky, Sarutobi answered. Ha! I made nearly a thousand in the clearing when I beat the crap out of Mizuki team, Naruto said. That you did, Sarutobi chuckled at the boy's enthusiasm, but it will take more than spamming out clones to become a great ninja. You will have to train hard and actually be serious about your profession. Naruto thumped his chest, don't you worry old man. I'll train harder than everybody in Konoha. I'll become not only the most powerful Hokage ever, but the strongest shinobi in the elemental nations. That's my promise of a lifetime. Det bei io. I'm sure you will Naruto, Sarutobi chuckled. And to help, I have some advice for you. But before I tell you what it is I want you to promise me you will listen to everything I have to say and follow the advice I give you to the letter. Naruto grinned as he thumped his chest. Don't worry Oji-san, I promise on my honor as the future Hokage of Konoha that I will listen to what you have to say and follow your advice. Dadubio. Sarutobi smiled before he began. Very well then. Now since you are a shinobi you will have access to the ninja section of the library, there you will find scrolls on chakra theory and control. Ninja Basics and I think they even have a few books on Fuinjutsu if you're interested. Though I would also suggest reading books on things like politics and other civilian practices, if you're going to be Hokage you will need to know these things. I want you to start off by finding books on basic chakra control and theory, as well as a Taijutsu style that will suit you if the basic style does not. I know you do not want to hear this, but the basic principles are the most important aspects of being a shinobi. Without them you cannot grow because you do not have the essential steps necessary to advance in skill. Sarutobi looked at Naruto. Promise me you will do this. Naruto nodded, for once actually paying attention to what he was being told. You got it Oji-san. I promise, first thing tomorrow morning I will go to the library and look up that information. Naruto frowned for a moment. Though, I don't know if they'll let me in. Sarutobi frowned. He knew that a lot of places did allow Naruto entrance, like many of the shops and restaurants. Thankfully, the library, unlike the shops and restaurants, was government-owned, meaning he was the only one who could bar someone entrance. If they try to bar you in trance, just tell them barring entrance to a shinobi is illegal and that if they try they can take it up with me. Also, might I suggest some new clothes? New clothes? What's wrong with these clothes? Asked Naruto, he liked these clothes. They were orange, and warm, and comfortable, and orange. Naruto, I know you like the color orange, however it is not a good color for a shinobi, Sarutobi said. When you are out on a mission, those clothes will stick out like a sore thumb, and a ninja is supposed to blend in. Deciding to add some incentive Sarutobi added another thing. Besides if you wear clothes that are more shinobi like it will add a powerful and mysterious image to you, making people recognize how powerful of a ninja you are. That seemed to get Naruto hooked. I'll do it Oji-san. He frowned for a moment as he remembered when he had tried buying other clothes a few times, however he had always been kicked out of the stores before he could even take a look at the clothing selection. Good. Sarutobi smiled. Now you have a whole week to get stronger before you get your Jonin Sensei assigned. The San Daime said, I suggest you use this time to get catch up with the rest of your class, 
with Cage Bushins you should be able to get a decent level of knowledge and learn the basics. Though you will have to do physical exercise yourself, since clones can't do that for you. Naruto blinked, why not? Because a clone is merely a chakra construct, it's not your real body therefore it can't help you grow physically, Sarutobi answered. Now it's getting late, so why don't you get to bed? That way you can start getting stronger early tomorrow. Right, Naruto shouted enthusiastically, I'll see you later Gigi. Sarutobi watched as Nato left, with the knowledge of that jutsu he should be able to grow strong. Sarutobi looked at a picture of Minato, your son is on the path to being a great shinobi Minato. The next morning Naruto woke up early feeling fresh as a daisy, despite having been up late last night helping deal with a traitor and the shocking revelations that followed. He stood up and stretched out, working out some of the kinks he had gotten from the night before, and after that he started to get ready for the day, getting showered, getting dressed, eating his ramen and then heading for the library. As he walked down the street Naruto ignored the glares and muttering sent his way. While they still kind of bothered him, he refused to let it get to him in any way. Now that he knew why he was hated, he was more determined to make them see that he wasn't some demon. That he was a proud shinobi of Konoha. He would start by following his grandfather figure's advice and start getting stronger and smarter. Hence the reason he was heading to the library to study. He didn't much like the idea of studying, but he had promised Sarutobi as a future Hokage so he had to go through with it. And if there was one thing Naruto would never do, it was going back on his word. Who knows, maybe it would actually help. Naruto entered the library and looked around, feeling his eyes widen at the sight before him. He had never been to the library before and was amazed at how large the place was. There were about four stories in the library altogether, and all along the walls and in aisles going down the library were books, loads and loads of books. It was giving him a headache just looking at them. Just as Naruto was about to make his way towards the ninja section of the library, he was stopped by the custodian. I am going to have to ask you to leave boy, the custodian. A woman who looked to be in her mid-fifties said, spitting out the word boy with venom. Naruto's first desire was to jump at the woman and start yelling about how she couldn't kick him out. However he had promised Oji-san that he would be an amazing ninja and ninja were mature and did not lose their emotions over something as simple as this. Instead he merely looked at the woman calmly as he spoke. Listen lady, I happen to be a shinobi of Konoha, and it's illegal to bar me entrance into the library. To emphasis his point Naruto pointed to his headband, making the woman pale a bit. Of course, if you feel this is still a problem I am sure that I could escort you to see Hokage Oj-sama and we can work it out with him. Naruto breathed a sigh of relief, he had almost called the Hokage Oji-san. But that would not sound good if he called the Hokage that right now, after all most people could never get away with calling the most powerful ninja in the village an old man. The woman took a step back in shock for a second, unsure what to do in this situation. The boy had never actually come to the library before so this had not really been a pressing issue. However, like people who worked at other places she did not want the demon to be in her presence, or in the vicinity of stores of knowledge that could potentially help it shed its human flesh. She soon realized however, there was nothing she could do. It was well known that the Hokage was quite partial with the boy, and would favor him over her. Scowling she turned around and left but not before giving him some advice. Fine you can stay, though I suggest you take care when reading child. Should any of these books be out of place or damaged in any way I'm holding you responsible. Naruto snorted as the woman walked off. Seriously, did she think someone like her could scare the great Uzumaki Naruto with such a lame threat? Shaking his head now that the crisis was averted Naruto made his way to the shinobi section of the library. He put his hands in a ram seal and created five cage bunshines. Alright, I want you guys to grab some books and check them out. Anything you can find on chakra, seals, taijutsu and basic shinobi skills will be fine. Also, find a book on politics, whatever that is, Jizen said it was important for a Hokage to know so I need to know it. Bring them back home and start reading them. Wait, what will you be doing? Asked one of the clones, angry that his creator was shoving off his reading on them. I'm going to go shopping, Naruto said. He hated that he was going to get new clothes, but again. He had promised Oji-san that he would get new clothes, and the man had made a point. After all, he wanted people to take him seriously, and if this would help then so be it. After all if I want to be a good shinobi I have to look cool too, Naruto sighed as he was kicked out of another store. Walking off Naruto tried to think of a way to get into a store. Unlike the library, which was owned by the government, aka the Hokage, the stores were all civilian owned, so they could kick him out if they did not want to do business with him which basically meant every store he had gone to had kicked him out. 
not wanting to sell anything to the QB brat. Looking around the blonde found a store that looked fairly nondescript, the only sign that told him it was for Shinobi was the rather large kunai symbol above the door and the sign that read Higarashi Weapon Shop. Deciding to give this place a try Naruto walked in. Looking around the first thing Naruto noticed was that whoever owned this place had an obvious love for weapons. There were racks upon racks of weapons lining the entire shop. Swords, staffs, scythes it seemed that anything anyone could name was there. He had never seen so many different weapons in one place ever, and some of these weapons he had never seen at all. It was enough to make even someone like Naruto, who knew next to nothing about weapons, drool. Can I help you? Naruto stiffened and almost shouted as he spun around. Behind him was a young girl that was maybe a year older than him, wearing a Chinese-style pink tank top, dark green cargo pants and had her hair done up in two buns. To Naruto they made her kind of look like a panda. Or a mouse. Naruto did his best not to snicker at the thought. Hello? Naruto blinked as the girl waved a hand in front of his face. Um, what? Naruto said, blushing in embarrassment as he took a step back and put a hand behind his head. The girl just looked at him before she rolled her eyes at the kid's inattentiveness and shrugged. I was asking if you needed help finding anything? Erm. Naruto blinked in surprise. You work here? That's right. The girl said. My name is Higarashi Tenten. My father owns this store so I come in and help when I'm not on missions. You're a ninja then? Naruto asked curiously. Yep, I've been a ninja for about a year now, Tenten replied. That's awesome, Naruto stated with a large grin. I just graduated. He blinked as he remembered why he was here. You know you can help me, I was looking into getting some new clothes. I can see why, Tenten said with an amused smirk. Your clothes are hideous. Hey, Naruto said, feeling the need to defend his clothes. These clothes are warm and comfortable and ugly, Tenten finished with a grin. Seriously who wears orange? I like orange, Naruto shouted indignantly. Seriously, what was it with people continuing to diss on the color orange? It was the best color in the world. It's my favorite color. Even so, it's not a very good color for a ninja. Tenten replied, finding the boy's defensiveness amusing. Especially when it's so bright. Naruto clenched his fists a bit as he resisted the urge to yell. Remember your promise to Oji-san. Naruto had to remind himself. You promised to act like a real shinobi, and real shinobi do not get upset over things like this. Damn him for making me promise this. He's so lucky I promised not to do any more pranks or I would be pranking his ass into next week. He took a deep breath before letting it out. Feeling a little more in control Naruto looked back at Tenten. Look can you help me with my clothes or not? Naruto asked when he felt he had calmed down sufficiently. Sure, Tenten replied, amused by Naruto's reaction. She took him over to the clothing section of the store. So what are you looking for exactly? She asked. Naruto thought about what he wanted to look like. He needed something that made him look cool and added a mysterious persona to him. Something that screamed powerful and awesome. Something. You know. I'm not sure, he said sheepishly. I've never really shopped for clothes before so. He had actually tried clothes shopping once when he was six and had just gotten an apartment, however the store owners had kicked him out before he could actually shop, that had actually been the same day he found his jumpsuits in the trash after the same store he tried to shop from had thrown them away. You're kidding right? Tenten looked at him incredulously. When he shook his head she sighed. Then it looks like we're just going to have to see what works. She pulled him over to the clothing section of the store, where she began grabbing different styles of clothes and then making him change into many styles she gave him, essentially turning him into a life-size dress-up doll. Eventually she found a style that fit. Now Naruto was wearing dark black shinobi pants that tucked into a pair of black steel-toed combat boots instead of shinobi sandals. He had a black sleeveless Chinese style shirt like hers but with a dark orange trim, she had tried to talk him out of wearing any orange but was unsuccessful in getting the blonde to completely rid himself of his favorite color. At least there was less orange than before and it was in a darker tone than his jumpsuit had been. His hands were covered in fingerless gloves that had metal knuckles that he could channel chakra through to increase the damage done. His arms were also covered in black bandages up to his biceps. Over this tent and threw on a black cloak that covered his form down to the ankles. Lastly she changed the strap to his headband, giving it a long black fabric that went down to his knees. There, you look much better now, Tenten said, smiling at him. Indeed he did look much better, now that she was seeing him without all the orange he actually looked cute. Now you like a real shinobi? You think so? Naruto blushed as he scratched the back of his head. Of course. So will that be all? Tenten asked. 
Yes I Naruto paused for a moment and his eyes glazed over as the memories of one of his clones hit him. Hello, anybody home? Tenten asked at seeing the blonde space out again. This kid is so weird. Actually I do need some more things, Naruto said, turning his attention back to Tenten who was looking at him with her head tilted. First do you have any training weights I can buy? Of course, Tenten said, leading Naruto over to one section of the store. She went up to a shelf and grabbed a box. This is a two pair set of training weights, one for the arms and one for the legs. To change their weight you just channel chakra into them and to release the weights you just hold your hand in the release seal and say hi. Naruto nodded at the explanation as he grabbed the box in her hand. Next up I need a standard set of kunai, shuriken, explosive notes, smoke bombs, and ninja wire, flash tags, a ceiling scroll to put it all in and. Naruto closed his eyes as the information of another clone hit him, this was going to take some getting used to. And a bow staff. A bow staff huh? Well you're in luck because we have all of those things, Tenten said, once more leading him around the store. Now then what kind of staff are you looking for? She asked as she grabbed some of the other equipment he had asked for. Naruto blinked as he went through the information of his clone. It needs to be made of a light material, but have heavier ends for added force, if I can get something that has studs or some kind of protrusions to do more damage that would be awesome too. And I want to be able to channel chakra through it. Wow, that's quite a detailed item you want. Ga slash Kia. Both Naruto and Tenten yelled as they spun around. Naruto found himself staring at a bowl of man. Large and built like brick shit house. The man had muscles on every part of his body that Naruto could see, he even had muscles on his muscles. He had brown hair and brown eyes much like Tenten. He was wearing an off-white shirt, brown pants and a pair of brown boots. Damn it Tosan, Tenten shouted as she clutched a hand to her chest. How many times have I told you not to sneak up on me? And especially when I'm with a customer. Tenten's dad merely laughed. Ah take it easy Tenten. Beside aren't you ninja supposed to be more aware of your surroundings? Do you want to be used as target practice again? Tenten asked with a maniacal gleam in her eyes and had one of her hands inside her kunai pouch. Her dad merely sweat dropped before he coughed and turned his attention to Naruto. So I heard what you want. That's a pretty descriptive weapon. You're fortunate that I have just the thing. Naruto watched with a mixture of shock and weariness as the man led him and Tenten to the back room, which turned out to be a forge. Getting a lad of the large man positioned it above a shelf and climbed up. Not finding what he was looking for, he got off and repeating this process several more times. I know I put it somewhere. But where aha? Here we are. The man said as he came back down the ladder with a large object that was wrapped in cloth. This was actually custom made for someone else, but well, he had died before I could give it to him. Since it's just been collecting dust over the years, I figured I may as well get rid of it. Naruto and Tenten followed the large man back to the front where he rang Naruto up. Now all that stuff you got there will come to around 10,000 yen, Tenten's dad said. Naruto cringed a bit but got out the necessary money, it would put him back by a lot, especially since he would no longer be able to gain a stipend from the Hokage since he was a ninja. That meant he would have to find some other way to get food, so he could use the money he had left to pay for utilities. Um. I think you missed the staff sir, Naruto said as he realized that the staff should be a lot more expensive than all of his other stuff combined. Nah, it's good, the man gave a dismissive wave of his hand. You can have it to commemorate your first time shopping here, Tenten gasped, her father had never given anything away, ever. Yet he had just given what Tenten could tell was one of her father's finest pieces of work, and to someone he'd just met. Naruto was even more shocked, this man had to know about his status as the QB container. There was no possible explanation for him not to know. Oji-san had told him that everyone who was old enough to remember that night knew of his status. Yet here he was giving him something that looked like it had taken more time and effort to make than all the time and effort that Naruto had put into all of his pranks combined. Why? Naruto asked in an uncharacteristically quiet voice. You know who I am. Both Tenten and her dad saw Naruto's hand unconsciously go to his stomach, one looked at him with understanding while the other was just confused. Because I'm not like most of the fools in this village kid, the brown haired man smirked at the blonde. Besides it's not like I'm giving this away for free. Naruto looked up at him. I expect you to come here for all your shinobi needs. Naruto looked at the man with shock, he realized that this man was also someone he could count on to see him for who he was and not what he held. He gave the two there one of his most brilliant smiles. Thanks Mr. Kaido, the man replied. Thanks Kaido-san. Naruto bowed before grabbing his equipment and running off with a grin. 
I'll make sure this staff becomes famous when I'm Hokage, he yelled out as he left. Tenten looked over at her father in undisguised curiosity. What was that about? She asked. Nothing. That concerns you for now Tenten, Kaido replied as he looked at where the blonde left. Minato, Kushina, I hope that this will help your legacy grow, it's all I can do for him. The next day, the next day found Naruto in a training field working on several different shinobi aspects. He had summoned around 100 clones to help him and had them divided into groups of 25. The first group was working on chakra control, from what Naruto's clones had read yesterday, the whole reason he could not do a standard bunshine was because he had extremely large reserves and next to no control, at least, that was the theory he had come up with from what he read. So he would need to fix that by getting better control. Right now they were working on the leaf floating exercise, the first and most basic exercise. It was basically floating a leaf over the palm of their hands and making it spin. It was just in one hand at the moment, but Naruto eventually planned on increasing the amount of leaves that he could spin, figuring that the more leaves he could float at the same time, the better his control would be. It was not in the scroll he had read, but Naruto had always been innovative when coming up with pranks, and that ability was easily carried on into other aspects of his life and career if he actually set his mind to it. He wanted to at some point be able to spin a leaf on each finger at the same time, rather than using his palms before he moved on to tree climbing, which was the next exercise he saw when he had skipped to the intermediate chakra control book, just to see what it held of course. Another group of clones was working on his daijutsu, in the academy he had been told the wrong stances by Mizuki team, who had been in charge of the daijutsu lessons, and so he really had no style, fighting more like a brawler than anything. He had originally grabbed a scroll on the basic academy taijutsu style. However he soon found that even with how simple they were, the style simply didn't fit him for some reason. It was odd because he had only started working on it today. But for some reason it felt. Wrong, was the best way he could describe it. Like his body type just didn't have what the style called for, or maybe that his mindset did not work for it. Whatever the case the style did not work and he had to find another one. Thankfully. His clones had found several other styles that they felt would be useful, he planned to learn them all so that he could find out which style would work best and eventually, combine the styles into something that he could call his own style, which would be totally awesome, and then he could shove it in Sasuke team's face that he had created his own style. One of the things he had read, his clones had read, that lead to his decision to eventually create his own style was the knowledge that most shinobi stick with one style that suited them, and only one style. But Naruto had read from one of the basic scrolls, that certain styles worked better against other styles, like the Uchiha clan's fighting style worked well against most styles but was particularly good against styles that relied on taijutsu techniques that they could copy and use against their opponents. But it was susceptible to styles that relied on being faster than your opponent, and styles that relied on unpredictable and untelegraphed movement. He figured that with the cage bush and he could learn them all, even if he was not proficient with them and turn them into something better. Right now he was learning a style called Muay Thai, a style that relied on stand-up striking along with various clincher techniques. The Taijutsu was also known as the art of eight limbs because it relied on punches, kicks, knee strikes and elbow strikes rather than just fist and feet. So far this style was the one he was most comfortable with, since it was a more of a straightforward style and Naruto was always a bit of a brawler. Once he got this style down he would start building his own around this one once he started adding other styles to it. Another group was working with his new staff, he had found an old bujutsu scroll and had decided that a good weapon would help him get stronger. He had decided on the staff because of his admittedly short reach, something he hoped to rectify soon. Like his daijutsu clones they were going through the style kata slowly at the moment, making sure that the muscle memory would be engraved in their minds for when they transferred. There was only really one problem with using cage bushin to train in a physical activity like daijutsu and weapons training. They could learn the katas of a style due to the fact that muscle memory was a mental faculty, but without a proper sparring partner it would only do so much. He could completely master all of the katas in a style, yet even then, if he were faced with an opponent with more experience than him, he would lose. Still, at the very least this would mean that he could make his daijutsu as impeccable as possible before he found a sparring partner to really get better. His last group was divided into two. One group was reading, most of it was on chakra theory, the use of hand seals, trap making, fuinjutsu and various other shinobi aspects, all of them were beginner books written to teach the basics. The other group was working his calligraphy. Naruto had decided that he was going to be better than all the Hokages, and had figured that surpassing the Yondaime in what he was best known for would be the best way to show how just how awesome he really was. 
The first thing Naruto had learned about the complex art of sealing was that it required a steady hand, and absolutely perfect brush strokes. One wrong mark on a seal and the results could be explosive. This meant he had to work on his calligraphy, because even if he did not want to admit it, his handwriting sucked. So Naruto had been forced to delegate a group of clones to getting better handwriting. It was a basic skill he needed to learn, and while it sucked, he remembered Sarutobi's advice about basics being the fundamental stepping stone into more advanced stuff. At least he was pretty sure that was what he had said. The man had talked so much when he had been giving advice that Naruto was not sure he got it all. Meanwhile Naruto himself worked on the physical aspects of his training. He would start off with laps around the training field he had chosen, training ground 43, a training ground right next to the forest of death, not that he knew that, since it was completely secluded. He was currently doing 20 laps around the training ground, with his added weights which were at 20 pounds for his wrist bracers, and 30 pounds for his legs, even he got tired. He planned on increasing the amount of laps he could do within one hour to increase his speed. He also did 50 push-ups, 50 sit-ups, 50 pull-ups on one of the trees, 100 squats, 100 log punches with each fist and 100 kicks with each leg. And that was his morning routine. Naruto found himself laying on the ground as he panted, exhaustion actually setting in. It was an odd feeling, he reflected. Naruto had never really felt tired before, something he was beginning to suspect he got from the QB. Oh sure, sometimes he could get sleepy but never from lack of energy. Right now he was really exhausted. With a sigh Naruto sat up, he was done with his morning workout but he still had half a day left. Turning to his clones Naruto gave the order to dispel. Unfortunately they all decided to dispel at once, even with his enhanced healing factor Naruto could not withstand 100 clones dispelling at the same time, which when combined with his exhaustion from his new morning routine, ended up knocking the blonde unconscious. It was nearly an hour later when Naruto woke up, looking at the sky and sighing in relief as he realized not much time had passed. Promising himself to make his clones dispel in groups to avoid the massive headache next time, Naruto stood up and made a few more clones. Go hunting and see if you can find something to eat, Naruto said. He was getting hungry and needed some food, with his money nearly gone from clothes shopping, Naruto did not want to waste it trying to get a decent meal. While his clones did that Naruto set about to making a fire pit, digging out a small ditch before collecting rocks and putting them in a circle around it. He gathered some dried wood and put the pieces in the middle of the pit. With that done Naruto went through a few hand seals and used a small katan, fire release, jutsu he knew. It was a fairly basic jutsu that was ridiculously easy to learn and he had only learned it because of its use in starting a fire for occasions like this. The jutsu was also easy, requiring very little control to create and one did not need an affinity for fire to use it meaning that anyone who had the ability to channel chakra could learn it. Hey boss! Naruto turned to see his clones, the one in the middle, who had spoken, was carrying several fish they had managed to catch. Good job, Naruto said feeling a little awkward at knowing he was essentially complimenting himself. Go ahead and dispel yourselves. The clones nodded and dispelled as Naruto set about to cooking his meal. After lunch Naruto created another batch of 100 clones and had them restart everything they had previously been doing. Meanwhile Naruto attempted to meditate. In the book on the basics of chakra theory he had read that by meditating a ninja could sharpen their senses, as well as their mind and familiarize themselves with their chakra. So Naruto sat down and began feeling the chakra in his body. It wasn't hard, Naruto had always had a lot of chakra, in fact finding his chakra had been the one thing he had been able to do before the other academy students. He simply had so much that he did not need to actually spend time looking for it, it was already right there. Once he felt it, he began to channel chakra to his ears. At first he winced, having channeled too much chakra and hurting his eardrums as the various sounds of the world invaded them. But after a while he managed to find an appropriate balance of chakra. He listened to the different sounds of the forest, or training ground. He could hear several birds chirping and some animals that were scurrying around on the ground. He heard running water, so there was a pond or stream not too far from him, it had probably been where his clones had caught those fish. He also heard other sounds coming from the forest of death, roars, hisses and other odd noises that sounded like they came from some kind of ferocious beasts. The place sounded like something from a nightmare. He shook the thought off and began channeling chakra to his nose, once again he channeled too much and had to immediately cut back. However, when he found the right amount of chakra where it no longer hurt, he began to try and differentiate the sense he picked up. It was hard since he did not know what some of the things he could smell were. But he did manage to pick up the scent of the trees, the dirt and grass of the field. Other scents he could smell, 
but simply not recognized. After a while Naruto stood up, he did not know how long he had been meditating, but he was getting bored. And a bored Naruto was a dangerous Naruto. Deciding to test his taijutsu limits Naruto put his hand in the ram sign, Taju Ukage Bunshine no Jutsu, he shouted. There was a large burst of smoke and when it cleared Naruto could see nearly 400 more clones than there had been in the field. Alright. All of you who I just summoned, this is gonna be a battle royal, all of you versus me. Naruto grinned as he got into the beginning stance for Muay Thai. His stance as near perfect as could be on his first day, ever. Let the ass kicking commence. Without delay Naruto charged into his clone's head first. Little did he know that he was being watched from afar by a curious observer who had been passing through. Naruto groaned as he flopped onto his bed, not even bothering to take off his clothes. He was not only utterly exhausted, but also sore in places that he did not even know existed. The numerous cuts and bruises he had all over his face and body were just now beginning to heal. Maybe fighting against 400 of his clones had not been such a good idea. Ass kicking, yeah right, more like getting my ass kicked. Naruto rubbed his sore ass where several of his clones had actually kicked him. Despite the pain Naruto was in, he felt good, really good. All that hard work had given him an odd feeling of satisfaction, and while Naruto did not feel like he had gotten super strong from that one sitting, he believed that he had made decent progress. This day had also been an eye-opener for the young blonde. Before today Naruto had never really trained, he did occasionally go out to an empty training field on occasion, and he would exercise quite often. But he had never done anything like this. Most of his time was spent throwing kunai and hoping they hit, or trying to come up with some bizarre move that he thought would look cool, with a name like Kuzumaki Barrage or some other egoistical name. He realized that those times he had never really made much progress. He also felt that he was a little more mature. Maybe it was because of the clones he had been using, perhaps they accelerated his mental age since he technically lived all of those clones lives, or at least remembered those clones living their lives from their perspective. Or it could be the meditation he had done at the end, he still hated it, but he had felt better afterwards, well, better until his clones had beat the holy hell out of him. Stupid clones. Or perhaps his change in mentality was due to the events that had transpired and led him to where he was now. Before Naruto had been ignorant, he had not known why he was hated, or why he was treated unfairly in class by the majority of teachers, or why the other students constantly made fun of and belittled him. Now he did, the Mizuki incident had opened his eyes. And he had promised not just himself but the Hokage, a man he looked up to as a grandfather that he would become the best shinobi and Hokage ever. And he would be the best Hokage ever, Naruto was sure of it. All he had to do was prove to the people of this village that he was not the QB, earn the people's respect by becoming a powerful ninja and show how far he was willing to go to protect the village. Then they would see him for him. Easy right? Looking over at the clock Naruto saw that it was nearing 10 o'clock. With a stifled yawn Naruto shut his eyes and passed out. Tomorrow and the rest of the week would be just as busy as today had been, hopefully he could get stronger, before it was time for the Jinan emplacement. The next day, the next morning saw Naruto doing much the same as he did yesterday. His clones had split off into four groups of 25, they would again work on chakra control, daijutsu, bujutsu and then reading and fuinjutsu, calligraphy for the moment. Meanwhile Naruto would do his physical workout. It was a little harder than before, Naruto had decided to increase the weights by 10 pounds, so he was having a few problems. But he still managed to pull through his routine and this time, he was not quite as exhausted since his body was already adjusting due to the QB. Naruto began having his clones dispel in groups of 10, that way he would not pass out from memory overload. He created four more and told them to go out and hunt. Meanwhile he was getting the things necessary for the fire pit. However, as he was walking Naruto heard the distinct whistling of kunai, a sound he had grown intimately familiar with yesterday during his battle royal. Dropping the rocks in his hand Naruto rolled forward, pulling a kunai from his pouch at the same time. Standing back up Naruto looked over where he had been to see an odd flat kunai sticking out of the ground. Looking around the blonde tried to find where the person who tossed the kunai was located, even going so far as to channel chakra through his nose and ears. When he didn't find anyone Naruto became impatient. Oi! Show yourself before I kick your ass, Naruto shouted, a bit of his old self coming back. Several kunai were launched from within the trees. Naruto dodged some and blocked others, tossing his kunai into the trees they had come from. He was not very good at throwing kunai, having been focusing in other aspects, but he had merely wanted his opponent to reveal himself. Or rather herself. For it was a female who jumped out from within the trees. As she landed on the ground in front of him Naruto got a good look at the woman. 
said the woman was wearing clothing that could be considered more of a lack thereof than anything else. She had on a dark orange miniskirt that barely covered her unmentionables, a fishnet shirt that once again did really nothing to cover her, it was especially bad since she had no bra under it as far as Naruto could see. Over that she had a tan trench coat that covered just enough of her breasts that Naruto could not see her nipples. She was wearing a pair of standard shinobi sandals with shin guards over them and had a Konoha headband on her head that held up dark purple hair that looked kind of like Shikamaru's pineapple hairstyle. The sight of this woman, who Naruto actually found really beautiful, reads sexy, he's just too innocent to think that right now, and yet at the same time frightening for some reason, made him blush and look away. Of course this caused the woman to grin at him. I take it you like what you see kiddo? W-L. I, um, it's, er. Naruto blushed as he began to sputter, nonsensical words. Anko's grin widened. You know I usually castrate men for staring at me, so you should be lucky I'm making an exception this once. Those words seemed to reboot Naruto's mouth as he turned back to her, you know, I really don't think you have any right to attack men for looking at you. Since your clothing you're wearing, or perhaps I should say the clothing you're not wearing makes you stand out more than Sasuke team does when he's running around town from his fangirls. Oh ho, Anko said with an amused smirk, so the Gaki can speak after all, you know I had almost taken you for a mute. Naruto scowled, look I'm not in the mood to play games with you. Whoever you are. I need to get back to my training, so why don't you tell me why you're here or leave. Now don't take that tone of voice with me Gaki, Anko said in a teasing tone. Before Naruto could even blink, Anko tossed a kunai that cut across his cheek before reappearing behind him, another kunai held to his neck. Holy shit. Naruto thought, his eyes widening. She's fast. I didn't even see her move. I was just curious to see who was training out here is all, Anko said in a pouty sounding voice as she wrapped her arm around his neck and pressed her chest into his back. She grinned as Naruto released an involuntary shudder and his blush came back full force. Really, I mean when you get a new neighbor it's common courtesy to greet them. And neighbor? Asked Naruto as he tried to ignore the feeling of the woman's breasts pressed against his back. Having never had to deal with any kind of physical contact from a member of the opposite sex, except for the time Sakura hit him, he had absolutely no clue what to do in this situation. Aha, uh -huh, Anko said with a grin as she leaned closer to him. Naruto blushed when the woman licked the blood off his cheek, causing Ankh's grin to widen, though she was slightly disappointed and confused when she saw that it was already healed. This training ground is right next to my home away from home, she pointed over to the forest of death. You train there. Naruto asked incredulously. He did not know what was in there, but if what he had heard the other day was any indication, it was not a friendly place. Yup, Anko said, smiling at him. It's such a great place, all the creatures there that would like nothing more than to kill you, the giant tigers that love to feast on human flesh, spiders, man-eating plants. As Anko continued to list off all of the amazing animals that could be found within the forest, Naruto was thinking about other things. Dear Kemi. This woman must be fucking crazy to go in there. And listen to her talk, it's like she gets off on life and death situations. As he continued to listen his mind went down a different path. Although she does seem strong, I didn't even see when she threw that kunai and then she moved right next to me in an instant. It was obvious that when she had first gotten my attention, she was toying with me. I wonder. You know, you never told me your name, Naruto interrupted the scantily clad kunoichi, who was currently talking about the best way to eat dango. How she got on that topic without Naruto noticing is anyone's guess. Well since you're asking, why don't you tell me your name first Gaki, Onko said. Naruto gave her a cheeky grin. Since you interrupted my training to introduce yourself, I believe it's common courtesy for you to give your name first. Hey well I suppose you got me there, Onko smirked. Well alright. I am the super sexy Midorashi Onko. Naruto gave the woman a grin as he turned around after she let go of him. And I'm Naruto, Uzumaki Naruto future Hokage of Konoha. He stuck out his hand, pleased to meet you. Anko blinked in surprise, wait this is the QB Gaki? Last time I saw him he was wearing that hideous orange jumpsuit. She had not seen the boy often. Usually she would spot him after he had done some kind of prank and started running from the Chunin, Jonin and occasional Anbu afterwards. She actually found the boy's pranks to be pretty funny and had always looked forward to seeing what kind of havoc he would cause next. Anko looked the boy up and down. Well he definitely looks more like a shinobi in that. I wonder what happened to his jumpsuit? Pleasure to meet you Gaki, Anko said, taking the hand and shaking. One of Naruto's eyes twitched, you know I told you my name so you would use it. Anko's grin threatened to split her face, I know. 
Naruto was about to growl at her when he remembered how fast she had been and his disgruntlement vanished. Hey Anko? Said woman looked at him. That was really awesome the way you were able to throw that kunai so quickly, and then you got behind me like super fast. So I was wondering if you would be willing to help with my training? Anko's eyes actually widened for a second. She had not thought he would actually request something like that, or request anything at all really. Truthfully she had just been curious to see who was near her turf, since most people stay away from any training ground near the forest of death, and had hoped that he would amuse her. However she thought about the request, she would not be able to spend much time with the boy, but she was curious. She knew of the child, hell everyone knew of Uzumaki Naruto. Aside from being just the QB brat as some of the civilians had called him, he was also known as the prankster king from hell, as well as the dead last of his class. In fact, she had heard that the only reason he graduated was because he managed to help the Chunin Academy teacher Iruka catch Mizuki with a high-level jutsu. Yet here he was, training with a buttload of cage Bushin, truly an ingenious training method and something she suspected only he could really do. He was still totally rough around the edges, she could tell that he had just started learning his taijutsu style, even with the clones, his moves were sloppy. Better than most on their first day but still sloppy. What makes you think I would want to train a brat like you? Asked Anko. Naruto growled as his eyebrows twitched. Hey! I'm not a brat. You stu he stopped right there and clenched his hands together, taking several deep breaths. Getting himself back under control he looked at Anko and smirked. Because if you train me, you'll be able to brag about how you trained the future Hokage of Konoha. Future Hokage of Konoha huh? Anko mumbled with a smirk. She had been getting bored with the monotony in her life anyways, who knows, maybe training some brat would actually be fun. Okay, you got yourself a deal Gaki, just meet me at the entrance to training ground 44 tomorrow and we'll begin the Tuai Mean training. Which training ground is training ground 44? Asked Naruto, completely oblivious to her slight slip up. Anko grinned and pointed to the forest where he had heard all of the creepy ass noises coming from the other day. Naruto felt an involuntary shiver run down his spine but agreed anyways. After all, how often was it that he actually had someone aside from the old man pay attention to him? The next day, Naruto cursed as he dodged the incoming snakes that were launched at him from the left. Jumping over to the next tree branch Naruto panted a bit as his cuts healed and the bit of snake venom in his body was flushed. Standing up Naruto looked around in fright. He had met Anko today just outside of training ground 44 as asked. Naruto had been hesitant to follow her when she had begun walking in the forest, but at her insistence he had followed. Almost immediately after that the hunt had begun and he had been running ever since. Anko had disappeared and then began to play a game of death tag, using snakes, kunai and anything else she could think of throw at him. He had yet to see her since, only catching a few glimpses of her here and there, right before she launched a snake or some other projectile at him. To top it off there were all of the creatures that were in here that seemed to be flocking to the noise he was making in his haste to get away from the crazy snake using Jonin. Everything from giant ass spiders, to large man-eating plants were there, and all of them trying to kill and devour him. So he had to not only worry about Anko, but also worry about the creatures in the forest. Training my ass. Naruto growled to himself. I'm starting to think she just wanted to torture some poor sap, and I was unlucky enough to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. He was beginning to regret asking Anko to help train him. Hearing a snap from behind Naruto rolled to the left, just dodging a giant spider that had tried to land on top of him. Grimacing, Naruto grabbed a kunai and wrapped an explosive tag around it. He had tried early on to kill these things another way that would be less wasteful, but had learned that he did not have enough physical strength to kill them with just muscle power yet, even when it was enhanced by his chakra. And Naruto had not actually bothered to learn jutsu either, preferring to get his basic skills in chakra control, tie and butchatsu up to snuff. He told himself as soon as he was out of here he was going to learn some jutsu that would get through these things thick hides. As the spider began to move towards him Naruto threw the kunai, it managed to hit the creature right in the left eye, one of its only weak points. This was the only good thing this damn forest had given him right now, better aim, since without it he would have been killed from wasting so many kunai. The creature shrieked and thrashed in pain, however it still continued to charge after Naruto. Putting his hands in a ram seal, Naruto activated the explosive tag. He jumped off the branch as the creature's head exploded in a gout of blood and brains. Bouncing from branch to branch Naruto eventually landed on the ground. He leaned up against the tree, panting as he tried to get a breather. Before he could however, several kunai came at him from above. Naruto pulled out his own kunai and deflected some away from him as he rolled across the floor. 
Coming up on his feet Naruto's eyes widened as Onko swooped down on him like some kind of bird of prey. He dodged her first kunai slash, jumping back as he tossed his own kunai at her. Onko merely caught and threw it back twice as fast. Naruto was able to dodge the attack but was not fast enough to dode it entirely and ended up getting a nick on his left arm. Deciding to test his taijutsu, Naruto ran towards Onko. He ignored the fear that welled up inside of him when he saw her grin. Anko flicked out her hands and shouted Sinayashu, Hidden Shadow Snake. Several snakes were launched from her sleeves. She had used this jutsu enough in the time he had been running from her that Naruto had come to expect it and dodged to the right. What he did not expect it was for the snakes to change in mid-direction, coming at him from behind and wrapping tightly around him. You know charging at an opponent who is clearly superior to you is just stupid, Anko said with a large grin on her face, she had actually had fun today. Naruto winced as his bones compressed. Yeah I kind of figured that. But at the moment I don't have many jutsu to use. Cage Bunshine, Hench, Kariwimi and my own Oiroke no jutsu and that's it. None of those can be used for long range attacks, and you're too fast for me to track to even think of using my kunai. Anka nodded, this is true. But you should have taken the time to think ahead and set up some traps or something instead. It's kind of hard to do that when you're busy fighting for your life, Naruto deadpanned as Anko's snakes disappeared in a puff of smoke. Anko rubbed the back of her head. Yeah I suppose it is huh? Naruto's eyebrow twitched. But then again in real life, you're going to have to think quickly or you'll get yourself and others killed in the field. Naruto winced as he rubbed his sore ribs, yeah I know. Now then, Anko rubbed her hands together. Since I was kind enough to help you train, you're going to buy me some Dengo. What? Naruto asked, thinking he hadn't heard her clearly. Yep, that's right you're going to buy me some Dengo since I was gracious enough to help you, Anko stated. But, that's, but I fine, Naruto sighed when he saw her pout, this would probably take the last of his money but she had helped him, and now that she had brought the I helped you trump card, he would feel guilty if you did not do as she asked. Where are we going? He held his head down as he mourned the coming loss of his money. Anko smirked as she grabbed Naruto and began dragging him to her favorite Dango stand. Ah, that was good, Anko said, patting her satisfied stomach. She had taken him to the place she usually got Dango from, and like she had asked, commanded, he had paid for her meal. Of 14 plates of Dango. Naruto was actually unsure whether to be shocked or impressed that this woman seemed capable of eating almost as much as he could. Glad you liked it, Naruto said dryly, listening to his stomach gurgle a bit. Anko blinked as she too heard the sound. If you're so hungry why didn't you eat as well? Naruto sighed, thinking about lying to her, but he had been talking to her, or at least, he had listened to her ramble, and found out her profession was in torture and interrogation, so she would specialize in catching lies. You already cleaned me out of money, Naruto said with a sigh, holding up his empty frog wallet. Until I begin going on missions I don't even have enough money to pay for utilities. Anko actually looked down a bit at that, actually starting to feel bad that she had pretty much just eaten him out of all his money. Contrary to popular belief, she was not some heartless bitch like most of the villagers made her out to be. However she had to put up a hard front or the villagers would try to harass her like they had after her sensei. She shook her head of the thought and looked at the blonde in front of her. Then why did you actually agree to pay for my food? She asked. Because you helped me, Naruto shrugged as if that explained everything. You're the first person to ever help me this directly. Even Hokage Oji-san hasn't helped me like that. Anko actually felt worse at hearing that. What about your stipend? You're an orphan right? Don't you get some kind of monthly allowance or whatever? Naruto shrugged, yay when I was a civilian. But now that I'm a shinobi I won't be getting one anymore since I'm considered an adult. He noticed her guilty expression and sighed. Look don't worry about it, I can see about getting some kind of part time job when I'm not on mission so it should be fine. That is, if anyone will actually let me work. Anko looked at him oddly before shaking her head. You, no, you're a weird kid. I eat away the last of your money and you tell me not to worry about it. Great. Now you actually made me feel bad. She groaned for a moment and looked at Naruto. So tell you what, I'll help train you when I'm not on missions or torturing some poor sap, for free instead. In return all you have to do is start giving me a good fight. Naruto looked at Anko for a moment, thinking about the offer. It wasn't bad all things considered. Yeah, she kind of scared the shit out of him. Actually she really scared the shit out of him. But she was also super strong from what he had been able to determine today strong enough to wipe the floor with him at least. He gave her a large grin, you've got yourself a deal. Sinayashu, hidden shadow snake, 
C rank offensive jutsu allows the user to project several snakes from their wrist as they make punching motion towards their intended target. The snakes bite and wrap around the given target, potentially inflicting multiple wounds. They are also capable of poisoning a victim. Hench, transform, E rank supplementary, a basic technique taught in all academies. This creates an illusionary transformation which can be used to transform into objects, such as items, animals or other people. This technique is merely an illusion and upon being displaced by an object passing through will dispel. Kari Wimi, Body Replacement, E Rank Supplementary. This lets the user quickly switch places with another nearby object, usually a log but can be done with others like a plant, animal or even a person, leaving the opponent to counter-attack. Many forms of debate have gone about as to what kind of jutsu this is. Some are under the belief that this jutsu is in fact a space slash time ninjutsu at its most basic. Space-time jutsu includes jutsus such as the Hiraishin used by the Yondai Mehokage. Aroiki no jutsu, sexy jutsu, E rank, or A rank, depending on who you ask. The technique utilizes the true transformation technique, or shadow transformation in order to transform into a beautiful nude woman. Unlike standard transformations this is a real transformation which creates a chakra construct that envelops the user. That's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like the video subscribe to the channel, and follow me on my other social media accounts. Anime God here, and I'm signing off.